So over the past few weeks, MLB Network, they've been releasing their top 10 rankings for each position. So that's what we're going to react to in today's video. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, because 6 of you that watch these videos are not subscribed. Get your life together. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, leave a like. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be a double upload today, so make sure to check out for that video. I don't really know what time it's going to be uploaded, so yeah, turn on notifications, leave a like, subscribe, so you'll know when that's uploaded. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into this video talking about MLB Network's top 10 rankings right now. I'm very interested to see what they have to say. Jorge Soler comes in at number 10 on this list. He finished number 7 in the rankings last year. And after a little bit of a down season, which you could consider compared to his 20, 2019 season, he still had a very good 2020 season. And Jorge Soler is a very good player who comes in at number 10 on this list. Next is Charlie Blackman of the Colorado Rockies, who came in not ranked last year in these MLB Network rankings, which is absolutely crazy to me because people are underrating Charlie Blackman. He finished as an all-star in 2019, and he is very, very good. And nobody really talks about him. I know people want to get on the quarters effect. Don't even get me started on that. Yeah. Eight, Joey Gallo. He finished exactly eighth last season, so he really made no improvement. His batting average was down in 2020, so that's definitely what's holding him back right now. If he can hit for a higher average, then he will be a very, very good player because he does play good defense, and he hits a bunch of home runs, even though he is in a more pitchers-friendly ballpark in global life field. Next is Michael Conforto of the New York Mets, who finished ninth last season, and he's another player that kind of is underrated, if we're being honest, because Michael Conforto is a very good player that not really, really many people are talking about. Six here is Mike Yastrzemski of the San Francisco Giants. Mike Yastrzemski is a player very, very good. He is super underrated, and he finished non-ranked last season. A lot of people thought that that one 2019 season was just luck, but it wasn't. He It was not a fluke. Five, Bryce Harper of the Phillies. He was six last season, so I guess he made a little jump in the rankings, but he's pretty good, obviously, um, but he's still like, Five in right fielders, which obviously five is good, but, you know, stacked right field position. Next at number four is Aaron Judge of the New York Yankees, who finished at number three last season. So Aaron Judge, very, very good player, hits for a lot of home runs. He's just got to stay healthy, and if he can stay healthy, then the Yankees will be a lot better of a team, if we're being honest. Number three here, Ronald Acuna Jr. of the Atlanta Braves. Acuna, Acuna Soto. They're both just pretty much a 1A, 1B. That's kind of it because they're so both so good players. And Acuna, very, very good player. And Soto and him will be battling out for number one and number two in the right fielder rankings for the future of Major League Baseball. Next is Juan Soto, who finished number one in the left field rankings last season. But Juan Soto, we know how good he is. He is probably maybe the best player if you're looking towards the future in Major League Baseball. Coming in at number one is many expected Mookie bets. Now, if I'm changing anything with these rankings going off the rankings here, I think Juan Soto probably is ahead of Ronald Acuna right now. They're both very good, though. So, I don't see a lot wrong with these rankings. I think that maybe Joey Gallo and Charlie Blackman could be switched there at the 8th eight, eight and ninth. And maybe Michael Conforto can move up one spot. But Mike Kuczynski is very good, too. So I can understand that. Good good rankings there for right field. Shortstop, number 10, Tim Anderson, Chicago White Sox. He was not ranked last season. So Tim Anderson definitely made a jump. Tim Anderson's very, very good, and no one's really talking about him that much. Number 9 here, Javier Baez, who finished number 3 last season. We know the bad 2020 season he had. But even when he had a bad 2020 season, he still produces because he has a very good glove. Next at number eight is one that I don't necessarily agree with being this high. It's Boba Shed of the Toronto Blue Jays. I don't agree with it being this high. I think he should be at number 10 at the highest because I, I just don't think that you can put him this high in a stacked shortstop position. And also, where's Dan B. Swanson on this list? Nowhere to be found. Next, number seven, Carlos Correa finished ninth. He still managed to put together a pretty decent 2020 season, especially in the playoffs, even without 
him being able to use the technology and everything. So next at number six is Corey Seager of the LA Dodgers, who was non-ranked last season at the shortstop position. Corey Seager, he is a very good player who had a great 2020 season. And he was one of the best in Major League Baseball in 2020. Corey Seager, very, very good player. Washington Nationals, Trey Turner comes in at number five. He was non-ranked once again. Trey Turner. Now, here at the top four is where I start to shake my head here. Because Francisco Lindor of the New York Mets comes in at number four. Huh? Number four, Francisco Lindor. He finished two in last season's rankings. This makes no sense. Lindor, I personally think, should be number one on this list. Trevor Story, as good as I think Trevor Story is, and he's number one. I'm just going to go ahead and spoil that for you. But Trevor Story is very, very good. But I don't think he's the number one shortstop in baseball. If I'm doing my rankings right here, I think Lindor's one. I think Story is two. Tatis is three. Bogart's four. And go from there. Probably that. But one story, Tatis, Bo, Tatis Jr. at number two, Bogarts at three, Lindor at four, and five, Turner. So, yeah, that's the shortstop ranking. Second baseman, this one is a not too stacked position. I'm just going to be honest. Number 10, Ozzy Albies of the Atlanta Braves. I don't agree with him being this low. Yes, he had injuries, but I don't agree with him being this low. Nine, Jose Altuve. Pretty self-explanatory how he went down from number three because he had a terrible 2020 season. Terrible. Next to number eight, Chris Taylor of the Dodgers. I don't necessarily agree with that one. Number seven, Donovan Solano of the Giants. I don't agree with that one either. I know I'm kind of being a little complainy right here, but I don't agree with either of those. Jake Cronenworth of the Padres. I can see that. Kevin Biggio of the Blue Jays at number five. Brandon Lowe of the Tampa Bay Rays at number four. That's a tough ranking right there. Because I personally think Ozzy Alvey should be number four, number five here. Maybe even number three after Cattell Marte's kind of not so good 2020 season. Um, he finished number one last season. And yeah. So Cattell Marte's at three. Jeff McNeil at two of the New York Mets. He is so underrated. I understand while well, he's at number two, and G.J. LeMahieu of the New York Yankees at number one in their second base rankings. I think you could kind of guess LeMahieu was going to be there. So now the starting pitchers. This one may kind of be controversial. Walker Buehler comes in at number 10 for the L.A. Dodgers here. He is so good, and he will be at the top of these rankings um, when Clayton Kershaw retires maybe, or very soon. It doesn't really matter. There, Aaron Nola at number nine of the Philadelphia Phillies. I personally think Bueller's the better pitcher, but whatever. Denelson Lamette at number eight. Clayton Kershaw at number seven. Toronto Blue Jays ace, Henji and Ryu comes in at six. Shane Bieber at five. Four, Trevor Bauer. Three, Max Scherzer. Two, Garrett Cole. One, Jacob DeGrom. Now, I agree with most of these rankings. Now, I know that you're going into 2021. Here, Shane Bieber, I can agree with him. Bauer, I can agree a little bit with. I agree with most of these rankings. I think Bueller should probably be higher than Lament and Nola, but that's just my opinion. So, top 10 third baseman now. This is where I really, I, I wasn't a big fan. I'm just going to be honest. Eugenio Suarez at number 10. G Gio Rochelle at number nine. I don't like that one either. Eugenio Suarez is a better third baseman, in my opinion, than Gio Rochelle. Josh Johnson at eight. Matt Chapman at seven. I don't like that one either because I think Matt Chapman's better than the next player in Justin Turner. Manny Machado. And then Jose Ramirez, Nolan Arenado, Alex Bregman, and Anthony Rendon. Now here, this is a stacked position. Do not get me wrong. This is a stacked position. If I'm doing my personal rankings, I think Arenado's one here. I think Rendon's two. I think Ramirez is three. Machado, four. And Bregman, five, if I'm being honest. Maybe I'm I, – I just don't think Bregman – let's look at Bregman's 2020 stats. Let's look at it. I mean, it could be really surprising to me. 
six home runs, 22 RBIs, 242 average. I know you've got to go some off this season and some off the other seasons, but I don't necessarily agree with that. Next at top 10 at first baseman, I think we all know who's going to be number one, Freddie Freeman. He won MVP. Next, Paul Goldschmidt, number two. Then you've got Luke Ward at number three. Do we have a Yankees fan like ranking these? For Jose Abreu, he won the AL MVP. And we're putting him at four? <laughs> I think he should at least be at number three, honestly. Max Muncy at number five. Number six, Anthony Rizzo. Number seven, Pete Alonso. Number eight, Matt Olson. And number nine, Reese Hoskins. And number 10, Carlos Santana. Makes sense there. Those are pretty accurate, I would say. I would probably switch them around a little bit. Top 10 left fielders. Let's go ahead and get into it. This is a less stacked position, I'm going to be honest. And I'm already seeing one that I don't like here. 10, Lordy Scoriel Jr. of the Toronto Blue Jays. 9, Clint Frazier of the New York Yankees. <laughs> no! No, they didn't just rank Alex Dickerson at number 8. Oh. No. No, they didn't. They mistyped this, didn't they? Please. He had a good 2020. I don't know that I agree with that. Like, he had a good 2020. Don't get me wrong. His 2020 was good. But at number 8, I don't, I don't agree with that. Number 7, Eloy Menes of the Chicago White Sox. 6, Dominic Smith of the New York Mets. 5, Jesse Winker of the Cincinnati Reds. 4th, Marcelo Zuna of the free agent team. Um, next, three, Mark Canna of the Oakland Athletics. Number two, Michael Brantley. And number one, Christian Yelich. Ozuna, I think, should be one, two or three here, in my opinion. So, yeah, pretty good rankings. Center fielder, I'm not even going to mention who's number one because we all know, but it's Mike Trout. Durr, um, yeah. Two, Cody Bellinger of the Dodgers. Number three, George Springer. I think these are, this is really accurate. I, I really like this for this position. Tenth, Byron Buxton. Ninth, Australian Marte. Eighth, Trent Grissom. Seventh, Raymond Laureato. Sixth, Kyle Lewis of the Seattle Mariners. Brandon Nemo at five. Alex Verdugo at four. I like those rankings. I, I'd probably go with those similar rankings. And we've got catchers and relief pitchers left. Relief pitchers. Let's go ahead and get into it. Josh Hader at 10. I know a lot of people are mad about this one, and I am too. I don't like this at all. This is a bad ranking, in my opinion. I don't like that. Josh Hader at 10? No. Tyler Duffy at number 9. Aaron Bummer at 8. Aroldis Chapman at 9. Brad Hand at 6. 5 is James Hornchak of Cleveland. Nick Anderson, Devin Williams, Drew Pomerantz, and Liam Hendricks. Liam Hendricks. One, obviously, um, Josh Hader should be quite a bit higher, I think. So, yeah. But our final position here is the catchers. And we've got 10, James McCann of 9, Mitch Garver, 8, Tra Travis Darneau, 7, Salvador Perez. I think Perez is a bit low. Austin Nola at 6, John Murphy at 5, Wilson Gutierrez at 4, Will Smith at 3, Yasmani Grandal, and JT Real Muto. So, Romito Grandal, number one, number two by most people. And they actually ranked Grandal ahead of Romito last season. But Romito has got that number one spot this season. So, I personally think Perez should be a lot higher. Darno, if he can keep that up for another year, then he'll probably jump up in the rankings. Um, but overall, these were some good rankings by MLB Network. Even though I do tend to complain a little bit about some of these rankings, overall, this is these are some good rankings and rankings that I agree with for the most part. So, yeah, good rankings by MLB Network. Link in the description to the article where all of them are. And, yeah, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications because 60% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed. Get your life together. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, leave a like. I don't know what time the second video will be uploaded, but subscribe, turn on notifications, and leave a like on this video. Um, turn on notifications so you'll get notified whenever the video is uploaded. It should be instantly. So, yeah. Um, I don't know what time, but there should be a second video. Thank you for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. 68% of you views, like, etc. Not subscribe. Get your life together. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, leave a like. Thank you for watching, and peace.